Welcome back to another episode of Virus Versus. We're glad to have you back. Today we'll be covering the C of thalassemia so that we can cover alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. See you there in a moment. Today on Virus Versus, we find ourselves on board ship. We are currently cruising along across the Sea of Thalassemia. The name Thalassemia was first derived from the Greek word meaning the sea, so we think it's fitting that Thalassemia should be found on the sea. To start us off with, we're returning once again to a motif we've seen before with microcytic anemias. Herein, we have a dwarf sailor wearing the red beret that should represent to you already microcytic anemia. As with our other microcytic anemia videos, this dwarf will represent the symptoms for microcytic anemia. These same symptoms apply in cases of thalassemia, and there will be some additional symptoms that we'll be exploring in detail as we get to the individual case. First of all, we note that he has small red blood cells from the red beret he wears that resembles a red blood cell. You'll notice the bluing sclera and the bluing lips and nails as in other microcytic anemia. This is the cyanosis that we see in the extremities. Just like in other microcytic anemias, we see he's wearing the pale platform shoes that we should at this point be familiar with representing pale pallor of the skin. He also bears a canary dead in its cage, just as we saw before in Heme's iron mine. This represents trouble breathing and angina. Sleeping next to our primary sailor dwarf, we see, just as in other microcytic anemias, a sleeping dwarf sailor next to him. This is to tell us that a primary symptom of thalassemia is fatigue, just like in other microcytic anemia. We'll also note our two sailors are wearing special blue neckerchiefs. A sailor's neckerchief. This neckerchief resembles an alpha symbol. Whenever you see the blue neckerchief, I want you to remember that we're talking about alpha thalassemias. For beta thalassemias, we'll see their uniform later on. Our two sailors are currently serving aboard Her Majesty's Command Vessel 80. We can tell this because the ship's name, HMCV80, is right there on the side. See how the H is kind of worn out and all we can see is MCV80? Well, this should remind you that in thalassemia, just as in other microcytic anemia, the MCV is less than 80. Hanging from the mast there, we see a sign. Look, what's it say? Mincers 13. Well, this must be a reference to the sailors aboard the ship. The sign hanging underneath the mast saying Mincers 13 should remind you that in thalassemia, Mincers index is less than 13. This Mincer's index number can help you distinguish between thalassemia and other causes of microcytic anemia, specifically iron deficiency. So let's start by talking about alpha thalassemia. Hey, do you hear that noise over there? It sounds like a fish jumping out of the water. Back there behind the ship, we can see a blue fish with a special pattern on its body. You see that blue pattern circling it? Kind of looks like an alpha. This alpha fish should remind you of the primary causes of alpha thalassemia, which are deletions of alpha alleles on chromosome 16. Well, in the future, you'll be expected to know that it's deletions on chromosome 16. For this video, we'll be focusing on the pattern of deletions, not on the chromosome number itself. Hey, do you hear that at the front of the ship? Sounds like we already have our first sailor that we're coming across. Indeed, it's the lookout. He's dressed a little funny, though. Not wearing the bread beret of the other sailors, and he's also dressed in what looks to be a mimes outfit. He doesn't have the bluing sclera, lips, or nail bed of the other sailors. Just as a mime is silent, I want you to remember that this is silent alpha thalassemia. Silent alpha thalassemia does not have clinical presentations or symptoms. However, those with silent alpha thalassemia are carriers for alpha thalassemia and can pass it on to their children. The primary cause of silent alpha thalassemia is a single gene deletion represented by the one small fish that our lookout has managed to catch. That's right, only one of four alpha genes is deleted in silent alpha thalassemia. As we move about the ship, we meet our next two sailors sitting next to each other who will represent alpha thalassemia trait. Alpha thalassemia trait is caused by a deletion of two alpha genes. This is represented by the two alpha fish sitting on the deck in front of our two sailors. These two sailors represent the two different ways that we can achieve alpha thalassemia trait. Do you hear that? It sounds like music. Is somebody playing a radio? In fact, sitting in front of our 
friendly dwarf on the crate, we see a transistor radio. This transistor radio should remind you of the trans deletion that occurs in this type of alpha thalassemia. In trans alpha thalassemia trait, we have genes deleted on separate copies of the chromosome. When looking at this dwarf, we should note he has a slightly different ethnicity than the other dwarves. This is to remind you that trans alpha thalassemia trait occurs more often in African populations and in those of African descent. Trans deletion is also more severe, represented by the fact that our dwarf here is having to sit down on the crate. Look at that! His friend's trying to cheer him up by giving him some sort of flower. Well, this other sailor, with the cystus flower that he's giving, and remind you that this is cis alpha thalassemia trait. Just like his friend, this sailor is of a different ethnicity than the other sailors. This should remind you that cis alpha thalassemia trait occurs more often in Asian populations and in those of Asian descent. It is typically less severe than trans alpha thalassemia trait. Wait a minute, I hear a third voice talking here. That guy looks awfully familiar. That's not even a sailor. That's our miner. Do you remember him? That's right. He represents iron deficiency anemia. What's he doing here? Well, alpha thalassemia trait is often clinically mistaken for iron deficiency anemia. So he's here to remind you that these two can have similar clinical appearances. But look at that. This time, it looks like his confusion's over the full pallet of iron that's sitting on deck on the ship. That's certainly not supposed to be open on the deck of the ship. This is here to remind you that in alpha thalassemia trait, iron is not deficient. We have normal or even high amounts of iron. This is because alpha thalassemia trait is primarily a deficiency in hemoglobin. This pallet of iron should remind you that if you suspect iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia is possible, you should run the proper tests such as the Mincer's index. This is because if you treat alpha thalassemia trait with iron, you risk iron overload for the patient. Similarly, chronic transfusion treatment for alpha thalassemia trait can also lead to excess iron and lead to iron overload in alpha thalassemia trait patients. Hey, do you hear that grumbling? Look over there. It's our next sailor. Sitting on the deck, we see another sailor dressed in the typical uniform. Around him, he's got three alpha fish. These three alpha fish should remind you that this type of thalassemia occurs with three alpha gene deletions. To understand who he is, we first need to look at what he's doing. See that? I think I found why he's so frustrated. Looks like he's trying to tie some knots. Looks like the first four attempts have all but failed. Those knots aren't going to hold anything. Wait a minute. Those knots kind of look like betas. These pretzel knot betas in the rope should remind you of the type of hemoglobin that is present in three deletions of the alpha gene. In this type of thalassemia, we form beta tetramers. And do you look at that? On his uniform, it looks like he's got the lettering that shows he belongs to a special group. He belongs to the HBH. It just so happens that hemoglobin H is the type of hemoglobin that forms when we have beta tetramers. So, on hemoglobin electrophoresis, in 3-alpha gene deletion, we expect to see hemoglobin H present. This is where the disease gets its name. This is hemoglobin H disease. So, remember this. Hemoglobin H disease is caused by 3-alpha gene deletion, shown by the 3-alpha fish, and has the presence of beta tetramers. You hear that stomping around? Look over there. That's an awfully big sailor. Looks like he's already caught four alpha fish, which should remind you of the four alpha gene deletion that occurs in this type alpha thalassemia. You see that fishing line with hooks attached to it? Well, that explains why he has so many fish. He's been out fishing. Wait a minute. Those hooks look familiar too. Whenever you see these curved hooks, I want you to think of the Greek letter gamma. This should remind you that his four gamma hooks relate to the gamma tetramers that occur in this type of alpha thalassemia. Wait, he's dropping one of the fish off of his hook. Well, that's it, he's distracted, and I think I found why. You see that cute bartender over there? And look, she has the HB naval lettering on her shirt sleeve as well. Well, when you see this HB bartender, I want you to think about the type of hemoglobin that occurs with four gamma tetramers. That's right, this is HB Barts, or hemoglobin Barts. 
This is also where we get the name for 4-alpha gene deletion alpha thalassemia. This is hemoglobin Bart's disease. Now let's take a look again. Our dwarf sailor is dropping that fish off the hook. Oh, thank goodness. Turns out he's actually dropping it straight into a basket. As he drops the fish into the basket, I want you to remember high drops vitalis. This is a serious condition where fluid typically accumulates in unborn or newborn babies. Because of this, hemoglobin Bart's disease is fatal. Oh no, did you feel that chill rub up your spine too? What could it be? Wait a minute, back there! See that hooded figure? Is that death? Well, this grim figure should remind you of extravascular hemolysis. Remember that because gamma tetramers are deleterious to the blood cells, in hemoglobin Bart's, we can have damage to the red blood cells, and thus lysis. So, this red death should remind you of the red blood cell death that can occur in hemoglobin Bart's disease, resulting in extravascular hemolysis. With four gene deletions out of the way, we can now move forward to beta thalassemia. Officer on the deck! Attention! Look back there. We finally see our first officer of the ship. He looks awfully young. He looks like he shouldn't even be in the Navy. Well, that's because this guy is a minor. This minor officer should remind you of beta thalassemia minor. Let's take a look at him. You see that? Even though he's young, it looks like he's already been awarded a naval cross. Well, this naval cross right above his beta brigade patch should remind you of the genetic alteration in beta thalassemia minor. Specifically, we have beta, beta plus. With beta plus, there is less production of beta chains of hemoglobin. What's that other patch on his uniform? It's like a target patch. This target patch on his uniform should remind you of another finding in beta thalassemia minor. That is target cells. In a smear with beta thalassemia minor, we expect to see target cells. Hoist down the main cell. The miner's given the order. But what's that? You see up there in the rigging on the mast? Looks like there are knots in the rope. These knots look vaguely familiar to the alphas we've been seeing all over the ship, as well as to the Greek letter delta. These alpha and delta rigging knots should remind you of the alpha and delta chain that form the hemoglobin found in beta thalassemia minor. And look at that on the miner's uniform. Looks like he belongs to a special group too. He belongs to HBA2. This lettering should remind you that the alpha and delta chain polymers of hemoglobin are better known as hemoglobin A2. On hemoglobin electrophoresis, we see increased hemoglobin A2 levels in beta thalassemia minor. We also can see increased fetal hemoglobin. Look behind him. Another officer has emerged, and it looks like he's got the rank of major. This dwarf sailor major should remind you of beta thalassemia major. Take a look at his uniform. Looks awfully similar, but there's some pretty striking differences. First off, do you notice the medals on his jacket? That's right, he's got what looks like two Majors medals. These are also right above his Beta Brigade patch. This should remind you of the genetic alteration in Beta Thalassemia Major. The round shape of the medals should remind you of knots, and the Beta Brigade patch should remind you that the genetic alteration is Beta Knot, Beta Knot. Beta Knots result in a complete lack of production of Beta Chains for hemoglobin. Look at that. He also has a target patch, just like the miner. Well, this should remind you that target cells occur in beta thalassemia major as well. And look there. On his right sleeve, he's got a patch there too. Is that a fuzzy skull? Well, this fuzzy skull should remind you of a major feature of beta thalassemia major. That is extra medullary hematopoiesis. This extramedullary hematopoiesis results in a crew cut appearance. This crew cut appearance looks just like the fuzzy skull patch on our major's arm. And look, he's got monogram pockets, one for H and one for S. Well, these H and S pockets should remind you of hepatosplenomegaly that occurs in beta thalassemia major. Do you see the HBA2 on his sleeve as well? He belongs to the same group as the minor. This is to remind you that just as in beta thalassemia minor and beta thalassemia major, we expect to see increased levels of hemoglobin A2. Oh my, who's the lovely lady? Wait a minute, she seems to be awfully angry at our major. 
Do you see that outfit she's wearing with the B-19 lettering? Did you guess it? Well, that's right. This angry lady slapping our major should remind you of Parvo B-19 virus. Besides the B-19 present on her sleeve, we can also remember that this is Parvo virus based on the slapping of his cheek. A symptom of Parvo virus is the slap cheek appearance that occurs with infection. It's important to remember because Parvo B19 infection can cause aplastic crisis in patients with beta thalassemia major. Don't worry, we'll see her again soon, I'm sure. Finally, do you feel that chill again? Oh no, deaths come again. Well, we've included red death here because beta thalassemia major also results in extravascular hemolysis due to damage to the blood cells from beta tetramers. Therefore, just as before, this death should symbolize extravascular hemolysis. Okay, I think we're just about ready to wrap up. To begin with, the symptoms of alpha and beta thalassemia are similar to those of other causes of microcytic anemia. We have bluing of sclera, nail beds, and lips. We have shortness of breath and fatigue, and we have pale pallor to the skin. Just as with other microcytic anemia, the MCV of thalassemias are expected to be under 80. We can use the Mincer's Index to discover a thalassemia. The Mincer's Index of under 13 is indicative of thalassemia rather than iron deficiency. A single alpha gene deletion results in silent alpha thalassemia. This disease has no clinical presentation, but those with it are carriers and can pass it on to their children. Two gene deletions results in alpha thalassemia trait. Trans alpha thalassemia trait is more common in African populations and those of African descent. It is also more severe. Cis alpha thalassemia trait is more common in Asian populations and those of Asian descent. It is typically less severe. Both trans and cis alpha thalassemia trait can often be mistaken for iron deficiency anemia. We should always check our Mincer's index to confirm what is the underlying cause of the anemia. In alpha thalassemia trait, we expect normal or high levels of iron. Treatment with iron can lead to iron overload, so we should avoid treating patients with alpha thalassemia with iron. Three gene deletions leads to hemoglobin H disease. Hemoglobin H disease results in beta tetramers. These beta tetramers forms hemoglobin H. On hemoglobin electrophoresis, we expect to see high levels of hemoglobin H and hemoglobin H disease. Four alpha gene deletions leads to hemoglobin Barch disease. Hemoglobin Bart's results in the formation of gamma tetramers. These gamma tetramers forms hemoglobin Bart's. Hemoglobin Bart's disease is particularly lethal. It can cause hydrops fatalis and often results in death in utero. Another symptom of hemoglobin Bart's disease is extravascular hemolysis. Moving to beta thalassemia, beta thalassemia minor is caused by genetic alterations, specifically beta, beta plus. On smear, we expect to see target cells on hemoglobin electrophoresis, we expect to see high levels of hemoglobin A2. Beta thalassemia major is caused by genetic alterations, specifically beta naught, beta naught, resulting in no production of hemoglobin beta chains. We see target cells on smears. We also can clinically observe hepatosplenomegaly. Beta thalassemia major also leads to extramedullary hematopoiesis. This causes the crew cut appearance on x-ray. Just as in beta thalassemia minor and beta thalassemia major, we expect to see increased levels of hemoglobin A2. Patients with beta thalassemia major run the risk of aplastic crisis following Parvo B19 infection. Finally, beta thalassemia major can also lead to extravascular hemolysis. Okay, well that's it for thalassemias. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I hope to see you next time here on Virus Versus.